Here the ambush on the attack once more. He's got it. And a chance now for St. Louis. They score. Moser on the shootout. Here's a chance to finish the game with only 0.2 seconds left in the quarter. Kunz the drive. He scores. Steve Kunz with a drive to the right of the goal. Here's Kevin Hundell dancing. Oh, he shot the score. One on one lead pass across for Kunz. St. Louis Ambush Soccer is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by your local Shell ETD convenience stores. And by Southwestern Bell Mobile Systems, a cellular phone, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And by HealthSouth Rehabilitation Center of St. Louis, the official sports medicine provider for the St. Louis Ambush. And by Boatman's, with money market accounts designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. And from the Keel Center in St. Louis tonight, NPSL Soccer, the Baltimore Spirit, and the St. Louis Ambush. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Barrack, alongside longtime St. Louis soccer analyst Bill McDermott, and tonight the St. Louis Ambush can clinch their second straight division title. Yeah, last year, Mike, they finished 25 and 15, do a very good job in convincing fashion. This year they've played 38 games, a win in either their 39th or 40th, and they'll indeed do just that, clinch another championship. And we'll take a look at the standings in the NPSL, and of course the ambush battling with Kansas City for that top spot in the division. Yeah, Kansas City, where did they finish? Uh, two, three weeks ago? <laughs> so plenty of rest for the Kansas City team, which is the team you have to be very, very wary of. They're a good side in this league. And the St. Louis Ambush have been bolstered this entire season by Mark Moser. Two big ambush records broken during the past few weeks. Yeah, David Doyle leaves the team this year, Mike, as you are doubtlessly aware. He had 175 points to go along with 75 goals. Mark has already gone way over that with 185 points with 85 goals. And he's done all season long what he's supposed to be doing, and that is score big goals in big games. He is a bona fide goal scorer. Well, we should have a great one here tonight. It's the St. Louis Ambush and the Baltimore Spirit. We'll have all the play-by-play -play coming up in just a moment. From the Keel Center in St. Louis tonight, NPSL action, the St. Louis Ambush and the Baltimore Spirit. The Ambush looking to clinch the division title. Hi everybody, Mike Barak alongside Bill McDermott and we're underway here at Keel with St. Louis coming into the action at 28 and 10 after a record last season of 25 and 15 and looking here for a victory to clinch a division title. And Bill, uh, early on, Baltimore will take over into the St. Louis end. And you look out in the field for Baltimore and you see the man with the ball right now, Mike Stankovich, who has been literally in this league, it seems, for decades, Mike. And in particular, for any type of franchise that Baltimore has had, he has always been a member. And he still continues to be a good player for Baltimore. You have to be very aware of the fact that he comes out of the backfield and will not hesitate to shoot. And immediately it goes right back into the Baltimore end. And Joe Malia, the goalkeeper, leaves it up the left side for Stankovic. Here is St. Louis after it. Greg Zurich, but pounded right back deep into the St. Louis end. Baltimore trying to work it free. On the opposite side for Franklin McIntosh. His shot blocked. A bicycle kick going up into the stands with a total of 14-13 left in the opening quarter. No score. And the ambush always looked at Chris Kenny, one of the solid defenders in this league. He is a rock hard defender in the back. Uh, we talked about him on our last telecast, one of the busier players uh, for the St. Louis ambush. He, he coaches at uh, Marquette High School. As we look at another coach, the player coach of the St. Louis ambush, Daryl Duran, who looks a little bit worried there. Perhaps because of the fact that uh, Steve Mallory is not totally match foot, he will be playing sparingly this evening. 
Here's a shot towards Joe Malia, 25-year-old New York native, winds it right back into midfield. Early on, first quarter here at Keele before a jam-packed lower deck crowd. And Scott McDaniel on the left side, works in against uh, Kevin Sloan, works in and fires right in front, nobody home. It caroms to the near wing where Steve Trichu has possession. In front for Moser, knocked down, and Baltimore control for Sloan on the opposite side. We have a scoreless game, 13-18 to go in the first, and Baltimore will work out of the backfield. We talked about Joe Malia, Mike. He's the goalkeeper for the Baltimore Spirit. Along with him is Chris Vaccaro. They have a very accomplished duo, the Baltimore Spirit does, along with the St. Louis Ambush, who counted with Jamie Swanner, who's playing tonight, and Bill Cowley. Pretty much a prerequisite in this league that you have a good second string, if you will, goaltender who can step in when your first string goalkeeper cannot play. And of course, the Ambush will conclude their regular season and will work into the playoffs. You can pick up $2 tickets through Venture and redeem at the Keel Center box office, or you can call tickets now, dial ticks at 291. 7,600. The first playoff game will be Saturday, April 1st at Kiel, and then if necessary, game three of the opening round, that will be April 2nd at the Kiel Center. And speaking of the playoffs, Mike, what the ambush is looking for, ideally, in the best of all worlds, is the home field advantage, not just in the national division, but throughout the entire playoff system. And they'll have a chance as Cleveland and St. Louis battling for the top spot. Only a game separating the two teams. And uh, out of his own end is Joe Malia, the goalkeeper for the Baltimore Spirit. 12-13 to go in the opening quarter. And Malia chips it ahead in the midfield, and it's dropped right back for the Baltimore goalkeeper. Malia, two years played with the Harrisburg Heat, just slams it right back towards Daryl Duran, who plays it up in the midfield and a break for St. Louis. Eric Eichmann, who started the season down in Florida, enjoying the ambush here in the second half of the year, battling along the boards with Jamie Christie, and finally it squirts in the midfield. But Duran takes it away, leads a rush with LaPosha. Duran now gets away from Brad Smith, and then it's knocked along the far side, a foul and a restart for St. Louis. Here is another example, Mike. The ambush get the ball back, they momentarily lose it, but they get it back because one more time of the hard work of Eric Eichmann. And Kevin Hundelt sets it up for Steve Kuhn. St. Louis in the midfield, no score here at Keel. And Jamie Swanner with 209 career professional victories in this league, leads it free up in the midfield and a break for St. Louis. Here's Kuhn's now. Just weaves free into the Baltimore end. A lead pass ahead for Eichmann. In against the defense, fires in front, Malia! Slides to make the stop with a couple of ambush players in front. And out of the backfield comes Mike Stankovic. Up into the midfield area for Barry Stitz. Into the corner it goes. And Franklin McIntosh, a dangerous scorer, trying to center one. Player knocked down a foul into the corner with 10.52 left. First quarter, no score. Yeah, Eric Eichmann, you see him seeing a lot of the ball this evening so far in the absence of Steve Maurer. Speaking of Eric Eichmann, here he is battling once again, lays it off the boards, running onto it, attempting to run onto it with Steve Kuntz. Good understanding between those two players. And St. Louis battling free. Here's Steve Trichu, a former World Cup player, just clears it right free, and Joe Malia just holds on for the Baltimore Spirit. This is a big game for Baltimore. They're trying to stay in second place ahead of the Harrisburg Heat for home field advantage in the American division of the MPSL. And it is Franklin McIntosh into the corner, battled against by Chris Kenny. Kenny takes it away momentarily, but finally it squirts for Lance Jansen. No score here in the first, and the Baltimore Spirit on the attack. Long shot, Swatter, they say rebound, they score! Lance Johnson fires it home. And with 10.04 to go in the first, Baltimore strikes, and they lead two zip. Well, Lance Johnson comes up by the backfield, volleys the rebound home, some very nice finishing, some good, calm, assured finishing from Lance Johnson. Once again, it starts in the backfield. Defenders coming forward, Steve Trichard backing up off this shot now. The rebound from the hands of Jamie Swanner onto it runs number eight, Lance Johnson, to put his team on top by a score of 2 0. Nice finishing from that player right there, number eight, Lance Johnson. 4.56 the time. Johnson from Sloan, and that's a two point goal and a 2 to nothing 
Spirit advantage. Now Mark Moser, his drive. Malia gets an arm on that. And finally, it ricochets in the midfield. Lead pass ahead for a streaking Kevin Sloan. However, taking it away and making the play on the tackle with Scott McDaniel, a foul against the Spirit, and Kevin Hundelt leads for Daryl Duran. Hounds a pass ahead for Joe Reiniger, his first 100-point season this year, but it's taken away, and the Spirit break back. Here is Sloan in against the defense. Passes it free. They score John Perry on a beautiful setup. And with 9.27 to go in the quarter, the Spirit have a 4-0 lead. Well, scored by John Perry, but created by Kevin Sloan as he assists on his second goal. Great running coming out of the backfield. That ball furnished to Brady by number 37, Kevin Sloan. But the running from Sloan out of the backfield goes right at the defense. Does number 37, lays it off to John Perry. He hits it first time. Jamie Swanner come off his line in an attempt to cut down the angle, but Sloan and Perry orchestrated that very nicely coming out of the backfield. And the Spirit have the lead of four zip here, so they've quieted this big crowd. Here at Keel in a long shot into the stands. 14 is mentioned to go in the opening quarter. Daryl Duran can't be too pleased about this early Baltimore lead. Well, you have to be careful of number 37, Kevin Sloan. He's from the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, very well respected in the Baltimore, Washington area. And he's been a great find for this club. He is their current leading scorer. And with plays like that, it's no small wonder. He will continually go at that defense. Vance Johnson plays it ahead. Swanner out towards the arc to make a play. Stolen. Shot just wide by Franklin McIntosh, who just looped it towards the St. Louis net. And the ambush play it free in the midfield. But Jamie Christie able to pound a cross field pass into midfield. 8.40 to go in the opening quarter. A downer early on for St. Louis. Mark Moser trips up oh, the Lewis. defender Stankovic, and Baltimore will restart in midfield. Nine times out of ten, Mike, when you allow players to run out of the backfield, and run right at your defense, you're looking for trouble, and that's exactly the reason why the ambush trails 4 nothing early in this first quarter. And a long shot going up into the stands. Uh, Jamie Swanner, 209 career victories. He has 13 NPSL records. Most games played, most assists, most wins. He holds just about every goalkeeper record in this league. And he continues to play well. This year he is 24 and 8, one loss wise in this league and leads the league in that particular category. Picked up his 200th career victory this season. And St. Louis control into the Baltimore end. Coons trying to center one, does Eichmann fires! Now he the save, rebound, Coons a chance. Eichmann now can't get a shot. And it's cleared into the corner. Eichmann now for St. Louis. Battles against two Spirit defenders. And finally it squirts for Trichu. Ambush take over. It is taken by Gate, uh, for Brook rather, in for Coons. And Malia out to play it with two oh, players Lewis. in the vicinity. A foul against the ambush, so things aren't going well for St. Louis early on. And some good goalkeeping by Joe Malia. He seems calm, assured of himself, and he's doing a good job so far. Here's Eric Eichmann again attacking for the St. Louis ambush. Rebounds off the near post boards. Kuntz can't run onto it. Play continues, but between Kuntz and Eichmann, they at least kept the ball alive. Here's Molly out to roll it up the left side for Kevin Sloan, 472 points in his career. Able to play it up the left side and a break for Chris Morgan into the St. Louis end. Morgan stops at the yellow line, chips a pass for Perry. He drives it just wide. And St. Louis control Duran along the far boards. Taken out of the play, clears it right back. Stankovic after it, a foul against the Spirit, I believe, and St. Louis will start it on a play deep into the Baltimore end, and actually they'll start it up in the midfield. In the locker room prior to tonight's game, Daryl Duran said, players to watch, Kevin Sloan, John Perry, and Franklin McIntosh. And exactly that is just happening in this first quarter. Kevin Hundell pounds it right back into the Baltimore end. Reiniger after it, Chris Kenny plays it in front. Zurich knocked off the ball, and it's controlled by Franklin McIntosh. Leads it for the veteran Stankovic, 38 years of age. Plays it free to the near side for Barry Stitz. 
Stitz against the defense and Hundel. Stitz moving in, shoots Swanner. Able to make the save, he holds on, with Stitz allowed to work right back into the ambush in. By the way, if Mike Stankovich is 38, I'm on the under 19 team. There is no way that he's 38. Well, that's what he's listed as, mm -hmm. and I've been told he looks a lot older, as you described. So he's the gray beard officially in this league. As they clear it right back and knocked into the corner, Reiniger trying to jam it free. Loose in front, clear to the left side. Hundel, Hundel shoots, he just missed. Going for the short side. Hundel again now for St. Louis. In deep, centers in front, headed by McDaniel into the corner. Zurich now for St. Louis after it, but Baltimore recover on the opposite side and knocked right back into midfield. Good work by the ambush to keep this ball alive and to keep possession of it in the process. Here the ambush taking control, Duran chips it free into the corner. Johnson after it, loose to the left of the goal, and Stankovic is there, and he just pounds it all the way down in towards the Baltimore players' bench. The score, four to nothing, Baltimore. You're watching St. Louis Ambush Soccer on Prime. Back here at the Keel Center, it's not been a good one for St. Louis. Joe Reiniger drives one, and the save by Malia. The ambush had been outscored and outplayed, and the ambush trail in this game is mentioned by four. Here's Swan Swanner for St. Louis, into the corner. McDaniel tries to center one, does. Oh, it just shot wide by LaPosha, rebound! And Eichmann also stopped by Malia. Some good running off the ball there by number 14 from the ambush, Mike LaPosha. He waited for the ball to be furnished to him by Mark Moser, that's exactly what occurred. Stankovic leaves it for Lance Johnson out of Towson State University. They have several players in this team from that school in the Baltimore area. And then it is the goalkeeper, Molly, and just sails it all the way down, headed up I'm in the stands, and a stop Taking with 4.47 Baltimore. to go in the opening quarter, a 4-0 Baltimore lead. Don't forget, season tickets for 1995-96 are available. $25 deposit. For more information, 241 goal. That's for season tickets for next ambush season. Well, Baltimore will set up on the kick to the left of Jamie Swanner here. And we'll try and increase their lead. Here's the shot. Swan yeah, yeah, the save on McIntosh on the big drive. Boy, that's from point blank range. Great hands by Jamie Swanner. And in the process, Mike did not give up a rebound, therein being the key. Chris Kenny shoulders it down. Into the corner it goes, but there he is again. Stankovic controls for the spirit and just sails it down in towards the St. Louis end. Battle on the boards with Kenny, leads it free for Burke on a two-man break. In with Eichmann on a two-on-one, and Burke unable to gain possession. He had it, lost it, with Eichmann in front. That was a tough one for St. Louis. Yeah, Kevin did all the hard work to win the ball, and that last touch of the ball just eluded him. And the play back in the midfield. However, the ambush take over again. Here's Burke in on goal. Long shot, Malia goes to his knees and then actually gets down and makes the stop. Earlier, Jamie Swanner came up big. Here's the save, and at last play, as Franklin McIntosh runs onto the dead ball, absolutely hammers it at Jamie Swanner, but the calm, sure, safe hands did the job. And St. Louis take over. Here's Gork in against the defender. He now shoots a shot blocked away, and Trichu drops it back into midfield. Three and a half minutes to go. First quarter, 4-0. Spirit. Ambush had been shut out a few times in the first quarter this year. And in the second half of the season, here's Coons now just chips it off the boards, but right to Malia. No real good scoring chance in front of that Baltimore box. But the ambush nonetheless is keeping control of the ball. They're getting their chances, Mike, and that bodes well for the remainder of this first quarter. And Swanner leaves it for Duran in midfield. Here's Daryl Duran. Able to play it gently into the corner. Mark Moser after it in, but out of the goal, Malia to make the stop. And we've noticed here in the first quarter, Bill, without Steve Maurer, other players in front having to take up the slack, such as Greg Zurich, and in the last play, Steve Coons. Uh, and in particular, uh, Eric Eichmann, who is not really accustomed to playing with his back to the goal, but nonetheless, he's been pressed into that line of duty. He's more of a type of player, Mike, that you'd like to see with at ball at his feet running from the midfield area, finding people with one-touch passes. 
Right now for St. Louis up front, McDaniel, Moser, and Reiniger, and Malia plays it for Stankovic along the far side. Just over two minutes to go in the quarter. A break, however, for St. Louis. McDaniel leaves it for Reiniger, circles free, weaves to make a pass over to Daryl Durant. Into the corner, McDaniel closing in. McDaniel now for Reiniger, moving in on goal, but no great chance as Malia makes a save on the rolling shot towards the goal. And Baltimore clear it free. Up ahead for Stitz. In against the defense. Stitz in on goal. Shoots. Just rolls it wide. Oh, he just missed going for the far side. And it's cleared right back into midfield. Johnson losing possession. It bounces awry and right towards the Baltimore defense where Stankovic, in his 14th year professional, leaves it for his own goalkeeper. Well, Stankovic still very active for this Baltimore club. He comes back, he helps out on defense, he attempts to distribute the ball, and he will find people very nicely out of the backfield. So you always have to be wary of number five, Mike Stankovic. Here's a chance for McIntosh. He just missed. And Swanner just clears it all the way down, right back to his opposition goalkeeper, Joe Malia. And Malia, who is 12 and 3 and has won seven of his last eight. Plays it free on the left side. There's one minute left in the quarter. Fires off the leg of Trichu and up high into the stands. And tonight's St. Louis Ambush trivia question brought to you by Southwestern Bell Mobile Systems. Uh, sell your phone. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. Who holds the ambush record for most three-point goals in a season? We'll get to that in a moment. However, the spirit knock one home. A quick centering pass for Kevin Sloan. And Jamie Swiner looks back and it's behind him. It's 6-0. Baltimore and it didn't take very long. Number 37, goal Kevin goal Sloan. Goal Kevin goal Sloan goal the leading goal scorer. He has the most five points five for the Baltimore Spirit. It's really no mystery. He's very, very active for this club. Running out of the backfield, coming up from midfield. He continues to aggravate the defense of the St. Louis ambush. He's assisted this time by number five, Mike Stankovic, about whom we just spoke. Six nothing, three goals for Baltimore. And that's where we stand here late in the quarter. And Burke now chips it right back. Ambush, we're down eight zip in a game earlier. Here's a chance for a goal! Right back the other way. The Ambush finally get on the scoreboard. A big late quarter goal. And exactly right, Mike, with only 42.5 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Moser again scores a big goal at an opportune time. With this back to the goal one more time, plays the ball to himself on the rebound. He blasts it by Joe Malia. Great work by Mark Moser to get himself into a goal-scoring situation. Kevin Hundell leads to his franchise record-setting assist total. Moser's 86th of the year in a 6-2 Baltimore lead. And the ambush break free. In towards midfield, John Klein after it. Play, however, knocked down back into the St. Louis end of the field, and St. Louis will restart in well, towards well, their own side. Well, Moser received the ball one more time with his back to the goal, Mike. Rebounds it off the boards to himself, turns, hits it first time. Very nicely done. And in this last ditch effort, Klein will take a spot up towards the front. Normally a defender. Here's a pass towards the opposite wing. Hundell takes over. 47 assists for Kevin Hundell. And the play now cleared right back in front and up into the stands with three seconds to go in the quarter, a 6-2 Baltimore lead. And another valuable aspect of Mark Moser's game is that he has not missed a game this season. He continues to be durable with a lot of punishment being taken. That was his 35th game consecutively that he scored a goal. And Mark Moser lights it up for St. Louis late and he scores the only first period tally for St. Louis. 6-2 Baltimore after one. We'll come back with more from Keel in just a moment. It figures, doesn't it? Uh,
St. Louis Ambush trail the Baltimore Spirit 6-2. Kevin Hundelt assists on Mark Moser's goal. A look at Kevin Hundelt who scores his 48th assist of the year, breaking his own record set from 1993-94. And one of the prerequisites in this league, Mike, is that you had defenders who can get involved in the attack, and that's exactly what Kevin Hundelt does on this particular play. Curls a ball into the corner. Moser receives it. Plays it off the near post boards to himself, turns and beats Joe Malia in the process. That was very nicely done. And we'll take a look at the trivia question once more. Who holds the ambush record for most three point goals in a season? And we'll let you go with the answer. You're looking at me. Well, I, I know the answer. It's got to be Joe Reinier, isn't it? No doubt. And it took place this season. And a lot of those obviously are from well outside the arc simply because of his ball striking ability with that prolific left foot. And Joe Reiniger, his first 100-point season this year, a terrific year for the big left footer. Yeah, he comes into tonight's game with 119 points, Mike. Breaks into the top 20 in scoring in this league, and between Reiniger and Maurer and Moser, you get a very nice balanced attack. And a look at Maurer, who missed the final game of the trip last week with a mild back injury. He, as mentioned, will play sparingly, but has a chance now. Shoots, he just missed. It may have grazed off the crossbar or the goal post on the far side. And cleared by Kansas, uh, by Baltimore's Franklin McIntosh up in the midfield. Could score! Steve Cruz throws it at the Baltimore defense. They're all out to congratulate the product of St. Louis University. Well, Steve Kuntz goes right at the defense. In particular, this player, Franklin McIntosh, who comes back to help out, but Maurer runs off it. Kuntz nails it in the opposite side netting. Good work by Steve Kuntz, who wears number three. Duran broke up the play. McIntosh comes back to help out in defense, but Steve Kuntz strikes this into the opposite far side netting, beating the keeper in the process. Good finishing by number three, Steve Kuntz, who, as you see, records his 39th goal of the current season. Darrell Duran on the assist at 29 seconds into this quarter, and Eric Eichmann now. Goals by the defense, shoots Malia. Comes out of his goal box area and rolls it up into midfield. St. Louis ambush scoring the last two and cutting it to within. A two-point score as Stankovic pounds it free. Into the corner, Jamie Christie in against the defense. Bounces it free on the opposite side. Perry a long shot. Swatter the save. And with a couple of players in front, a stop in St. Louis will take over in their own backfield. Glad you've joined us tonight. Ambush tape, play it free into the corner. Moser now cuts in front, shoots, Molly in the save. He gets his own rebound, centers, oh, and Eichmann just failed to tip it home and cleared right back into midfield. Moser continues to work, and because of his work rate, gets all kinds of shots seemingly from impossible situations. And the Spirit take over. Stitz plays it on the opposite side and pounds it right back into the ambush in. 8.28 to go in the quarter. Here comes Kevin Hundell, long pass in front. Eichmann, it bounces off his leg. Eichmann recovers, trying to center one, and finally it's flicked right back towards midfield. Ambush trying to tie the game. They've had pressure. Here's Hundell closing in. Shoots, he just missed. Rebound Eichmann, he fires over top. It goes off the glass and cleared towards the yellow line and finally right back into the St. Louis end. Nice to see Kevin Hundell getting more involved in the offense. That's what's made him such a great player in this league. Not just his defensive abilities, but the ability to get involved in the attack. They're looking for the foul against the Spirit, but St. Louis all over Baltimore in the offensive zone. Here's Mark Moser again turning on the last defender, shooting Malia, making his save, but the play is still not finished. Number 15, Moser continues to keep it alive. Slides it across the face, and Eichmann just misses. Here's a dead ball chance for Reiniger. Shoots and blocked at the wall and outside towards the line. Reiniger elected to shoot on that play. Swatter now, long shot. Oh, Molly in the save. Swatter almost nailed one home, and it's cleared away. You could be assured that Joe Malia was surprised by the fact that Jamie Swatter took that shot from that distance. Jamie Swatter, who scored goals in this league, but I don't know how often with a goalkeeper in net and a chance up the left side. Chance for Christie, moving free. Blocked off at the last moment, then gets away from Trichute. 
Swatter, a sprawling save. And Maurer leaves it for Gwerk. A play back and a whistle deep into the St. Louis end. 6-4, Spirit in a great one here at Keele. And this is St. Louis Ambush Soccer on Prime. Ambush soccer fans, Casey's Real Rock Cafe at St. Louis Union Station before and after the game for a free happy hour buffet. Casey's Real Rock Cafe. Well, Baltimore will set up with just over five minutes to go in the quarter. And the teams are at even strength, so the ambush kill off the penalty. And the Spirit failed to score in their shootout also. The Spirit accomplished uh, in large part they were what they were tempted to do, Mike, but they could not get that last decent quality shot. They kept the ball nicely, found the open person. It's five on four, there's always the open person. They found that particular player, just no decent shot. Here's Lanninger down the left side. Shoots, he just missed. Rebound headed down by Maurer, right towards Molly, and he holds on for Baltimore. Is a shutout in this league. He shut out Wichita a couple of years ago, which is a rarity in the NPSL. Now the spirit on the attack. Here's Perry once more. Long shot going wide. Stankovic now recovers at the yellow line and chips it right back into midfield. Yeah, you talk about a shutout in indoor soccer. That's next to impossible because but sometimes goals are scored by accident in indoor soccer. Here's Stankovic now. Leads it free. It's almost like a no-hitter in baseball. The shutouts in this league as they clear it free for Stitz. In against the defense and dropping it back for the defender, Chris Morgan, a rookie for Baltimore. And then Malia leads it free, stole. Long shot. Oh, oh it hits the crossbar, I believe. Rebound, Moser wide. Coots now controlling play. Centers Eichmann, Moser shoots. Oh, and Malia the save. Moser now in after it shoots. It looked like it went in. No goal, I guess, and play will continue. Moser, a great scoring chance, and evidently it didn't cross that line completely. That looked awfully close. Oh, As you all know, the entire ball must be over the goal line, but Mark Moser again with some tireless, relentless work. As we watch him here again, good goalkeeping again by Joe Malia. Moser keeps the ball alive, continues to dig it out. The bar, entire ball was think, not yeah, over the goal so. line. No. Entire ball was not over the goal line. Steve Kunt starts that play. Loose ball in the backfield, lays it off to Moser. Joe Malia, nice save here at the far post, but the play's far from being over. Mark Moser continues to dig it out. Gets it across the face of the goal, and just coming in to clear it is that spirit defender at the very last moment. The entire ball was not, however, over the goal line. Fans here at Keel voicing their displeasure, but clearly on the replay, close, but no goal. But Mark Moser continues to keep this ball alive. Wow. Good work, I've, Brian Crew. That's an excellent shot right there. And that's as far as the ball ever got towards that line, Bill, on that particular scoring chance. 6-4 in favor of the Spirit and Bushwhacker. We're unhappy about that because the ambush would have tied it. He could have uh, gotten that cannon going again. Just exactly where does he sit with that cannon? It's not behind us, is he? No, I think uh, we're safe up Okay, here. Well, it's, it's just, just wondering about that. Here's a long shot and Swanner the save, and then he'll roll it up the left side. 3.12 to go. Actually, he'll leave it for Duran, who winds it for Kuntz towards midfield. Ambush have had some scoring chances to tie the game, and Duran takes control. Yeah, yes, they have, uh, Mike. And Joe Malia has been doing some excellent goalkeeping for the Baltimore Spirit, and that's why his club still has the lead. A chance now for Eichmann, closing in, in on goal. Centers in front, Coons, knocked down. Too many passes, perhaps, and the Spirit break out three on two. Lead pass across into the St. Louis end. Morgan closing in. Morgan in, shoots Swanner. A terrific save. And back the other way, St. Louis Coons pounds it for Moser. In against the defense, and the Spirit knocked down. Foul on the play, and a restart for St. Louis. That also comes under Mark Moser's job description. When you're one against three, if nothing else, draw the foul. That's what occurred here. 
And Duran will set up, shoot, blocked away, and cleared right back in towards midfield. Just over two minutes to go in a fast-paced game. Second quarter breezing along. And St. Louis take over Hunda. Plays it into the corner. Moser now turning. Drops it back for Hunda for St. Louis. For Duran on the chip pass. Closing in. Duran stops in towards the net. Blocked away. And a breakdown for the Spirit. In is Jamie Christie for Baltimore. His pass broken up by Klein. Eichmann now, the Florida native after it. In against two defenders and then a stop and a foul in the midfield. When I mentioned Soccer Master, the World Cup of Soccer Shops, your headquarters for the number one name in soccer, Adidas. Adidas, the official supplier of the MPSL, is available at all your local Soccer Master locations. To see the full line of Adidas equipment, call 1-800-926-9287 for Soccer Master's full color catalog. Franklin McIntosh, his shot blocked away. Moser now in the midfield, chips it free for a streaking Burke in towards the Baltimore defense and leaves it back for Hundell. Just over a minute to go, a minute 15 to be exact, in the quarter, and a lead pass for Moser. Mark Moser leaves it back for Chris Kenny. Back for Moser as Chris Kenny gains possession for the ambush and drops it back for Kevin Hundell out of SIU Edwardsville. Back for Kenny in the midfield, and St. Louis take over. Here is Gork now, in against the defense, and Morgan, and finally it's cleared up the left side. 45 seconds to go. Ambush desperately trying to tie the game. Hundell into the corner, Moser, in against the defense. Moser stops, now his shot blocked by Stankovic. It sails high in the air. Gork slides to make a play, but Baltimore back the other way. Spirit take over. Perry now in on the right side. Long shot. Sweater. The save on Chris Morgan. And then he sails it up the left side. 17 seconds to go. Moser now shoots. He just missed. Going for the short side. Reiniger after it also. In against Stankovic. Gives him a little elbow and plays it up the near side. Break for Smith now for Baltimore. His shot going wide. Rebound. Swatter out to play it. And that's it. The buzzer sound signaling the end of a very exciting second quarter. The Ambush score once. They cut it to 6-4. And that's where we stand after two. 6-4 Spirit. We'll come back with more, including an interview with the commissioner of the NPSL, Steve Paxos. 6-4 Spirit after two. Baltimore Spirit with a 6-4 lead over the St. Louis Ambush. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Barrick alongside with the commissioner of the National Professional Soccer League, and we're very pleased to have Steve Paxos alongside. And Steve, uh, great year from the NPSL. How about a little bit of uh, information about the league, how it's gone so far, and really a state of the NPSL? Well, basically, you know, our attendance is up. Uh, we continue to grow. This is an excellent crowd here tonight. Uh, we admit a Tampa Bay for next year, so the league uh, will have a south uh, presence now. They'll bring us up to 13 teams. There's an application from Philadelphia for 96, and we're sitting on one from New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, when you combine all those things together, I mean, that's real great news for the league. And the attendance this season overall? Attendance, uh, very pleased. Uh, I think we're up to about 5,400 a game. Uh, uh, we look to, to set another uh, record pace, uh, hopefully with the playoffs. Uh, we hope St. Louis uh, is there at the end. Uh, they draw nice crowds, and uh, they're a marquee team, and uh, that helps attendance. Fans obviously excited about the scoring in this league. The three-point arc has made a difference, and a lot of excitement in the NPSL. Well, you know, three-pointers are up, I believe, by, uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but they have more than doubled since last year. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great move by the board of directors to move it closer in, and. Uh, 
the players are taking advantage of it. And, uh, you know, and people uh, throughout surveys have told us they want to see more scoring. And you can't ask for anything better than that. How about the playoffs upcoming, the ambush looking? They played Cleveland in the finals this year. It's coming up. What do you think about the upcoming postseason play? Well, I, I, I think St. Louis definitely has to be the favorite to be there at the end. Uh, probably Cleveland from the other side, we could have a rematch. But uh, uh, I think St. Louis with Cleveland head to head this year, what, two games to one? It's going to be a great final series, and we're looking forward to it. And who knows, you know, we might have a new champion. We're looking forward to that. Mr. Paxos, thank you very much for taking Thank it. you. It's a pleasure. Steve Paxos, Commissioner of the National Professional Soccer League. 6-4, Spirit over St. Louis. We'll come back with more in just a moment. Hi, Tom. How about it? Positively. I didn't have my glasses on, did I? From the Keel Center, the Baltimore Spirit with a 6-4 lead over the St. Louis Ambush after two quarters of play. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Barrick alongside Bill McDermott from Keel and a very exciting First half here at the Keel Center is the ambush battling towards that division championship. And Bill, Mark Moser scored the first one for St. Louis, but who else to, to nail one for the ambush? Well, you expect him to do that. He's been doing it all season long, and he continues to work, continues to work. Case in point on this particular goal. Kevin Hundelt starts it, curls it into the far corner, and there's number 15, Moser, looking, playing with his back to the goal, rebounds it off the near post boards to himself, turns and puts it past Joe Malia. Good work from number 15, Mark Moser. Now, Jamie Swanner continues to play superbly in the ambush goal, in particular tonight in this first quarter when Baltimore was continuing to come at him. Nice save by Swanner at the near post, then covers up to prevent the rebound. And of course, Jamie Swanner almost scored a goal in this game also. Here's tonight's scoring summary. The Spirit led 6-0, but two big goals, Bill, by the ambush to get right back into this thing. Yeah, and they're only trolling by a score of 6-4. It's not for lack of possession. And of course, the Budweiser scoring summary is brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. Well, the ambush trailing 6-4 after two quarters of play. We should have an exciting second half in just a moment. And Kyle Rowe Jr., the tremendous soccer star in the United States, will join us early in the third quarter. 6-4, Ambush Trail. We'll be back with more in just a moment. How's that? No retakes.
on a fast-paced game. Second quarter breezing along. In St. Louis take over Hunda. Plays it into the corner. Moser now turning. Drops it back for Hunda for St. Louis. For Duran on the chip pass. Closing in. Duran stops in towards the net. Blocked away. And a breakdown for the Spirit. In is Jamie Christie for Baltimore. His pass broken up by Klein. Eichmann now, they Florida they have after it. In against two defenders and then a stop and a foul in the midfield. I want to mention Soccer Master, the World Cup of Soccer Shops, your headquarters for the number one name in soccer, Adidas. Adidas, the official supplier of the MPSL, is available at all your local Soccer Master locations. To see the full line of Adidas equipment, call 1-800 926 9287 for Soccer Masters full color catalog. Franklin McIntosh, his shot blocked away. Moser now in the midfield, chips it free for a streaking Burke in towards the Baltimore defense and leaves it back for Hundo. Just over a minute to go, a minute 15 to be exact, in the quarter and a lead pass for Moser. Mark Moser leaves it back for Chris Kenny. Back for Moser as Chris Kenny King's possession for the ambush and drops it back for Kevin Hundelt out of SIU Edwardsville. Back for Kenny in the midfield and St. Louis take over. Here is Gork now in against the defense and Morgan and finally it's cleared up the left side. 45 seconds to go. Ambush desperately trying to tie the game. Hundelt into the corner, Moser. In against the defense. Moser stops. Now his shot blocked by Stankovic. It sails high in the air. Burke slides to make a play, but Baltimore back the other way. Spirit take over. Perry now in on the right side. Long shot. Sweater. The save on Chris Morgan, and then he sails it up the left side. 17 seconds to go. Moser now shoots. He just missed. Going for the short side. Reiniger after it also. In against Stankovic, gives him a little elbow and plays it up the near side. Break for Smith, now for Baltimore. His shot going wide, rebound. Swanner out to play it, and that's it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end of a very exciting second quarter. The Ambush score once, they cut it to 6-4, and that's where we stand after two. 6-4, Spirit will come back with more, including an interview with the commissioner of the NPSL, Steve Paxos. 6-4 Spirit after two. Center the Baltimore Spirit with a 6 4 lead over the St. Louis Amber. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Barrick alongside with the Commissioner of the National Professional Soccer League, and we're very pleased to have Steve Paxos alongside. And Steve, uh, great year from the NPSL. How about a little bit of uh, information about the league, how it's gone so far, and really a state of the NPSL? Well, basically, you know, our attendance is up, uh, we continue to grow. This is an excellent crowd here tonight. Uh, we admit a Tampa Bay for next year, so the league uh, will have a south uh, presence now. They'll bring us up to 13 teams. There's an application from Philadelphia for 96, and we're sitting on one from New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, when you combine all those things together, I mean, that's real great news for the league. And the attendance this season overall? Attendance, uh, very pleased. Uh, I think we're up to about 5,400 a game. Uh, uh, we look to, to set another uh, record pace, uh, hopefully with the playoffs. Uh, we hope St. Louis uh, is there at the end. Uh, they draw nice crowds, and uh, they're a marquee team, and uh, that helps attendance. Fans obviously excited about the scoring in this league. The three-point arc has made a difference, and a lot of excitement in the NPSL. Well, you know, three-pointers are up, I believe, by, uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but they have more than doubled since last year. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great move by the Board of Directors to move it closer in, and. Uh, 
the players are taking advantage of it. And, uh, you know, and people uh, throughout surveys have told us they want to see more scoring. And you can't ask for anything better than that. How about the playoffs upcoming, the ambush looking? They played Cleveland in the finals this year. It's coming up. What do you think about the upcoming postseason play? Well, I, I, I think St. Louis definitely has to be the favorite to be there at the end. Uh, probably Cleveland from the other side, we could have a rematch. But uh, uh, I think St. Louis beat Cleveland head to head this year, what, two games to one? It's going to be a great final series, and we're looking forward to it. And who knows, you know, we might have a new champion. We're looking forward to that. Mr. Paxos, thank you very much for taking Thank it. you. It's a pleasure. Steve Paxos, Commissioner of the National Professional Soccer League. 6-4, Spirit over St. Louis. We'll come back with more in just a moment. From the Keel Center, the Baltimore Spirit with a 6-4 lead over the St. Louis Ambush after two quarters of play. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Barrick alongside Bill McDermott from Keel in a very exciting first half here at the Keel Center as the Ambush battling towards that division championship. And Bill, Mark Moser scored the first one for St. Louis, but who else to, to nail one for the Ambush? Well, you expect him to do that. He's been doing it all season long, and he continues to work, continues to work. Case in point on this particular goal. Kevin Hundelt starts it, curls it into the far corner, and there's number 15, Moser, looking, playing with his back to the goal, rebounds it off the near post boards to himself, turns and puts it past Joe Malia. Good work from number 15, Mark Moser. Now, Jamie Swanner continues to play superbly in the ambush goal, in particular tonight in this first quarter when Baltimore was continuing to come at him. Nice save by Swanner at the near post, then covers up to prevent the rebound. And, of course, Jamie Swanner almost scored a goal in this game also. Here's tonight's scoring summary. The Spirit led 6-0, but two big goals, Bill, by the ambush to get right back into this thing. Yeah, and they're only trolling by a score of 6-4. It's not for lack of possession. And, of course, the Budweiser scoring summary is brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. Well, the ambush trailing 6-4 after two quarters of play. We should have an exciting second half in just a moment. And Kyle Rowe Jr., the tremendous soccer star in the United States, will join us early in the third quarter. 6-4, ambush trail. We'll be back with more in just a moment. How's that? Baltimore Spirit lead the St. Louis Ambush 6-4 after two and will start the third quarter with the Ambush trying to make a big comeback. We're thrilled alongside Bill McDermott to my right. One of the all-time American so soccer greats, Kyle Rowe Jr. Thank you very much for joining us and a big night here at the Keel. Well, it's always a pleasure to be uh, with Bill and to see uh, outstanding soccer here in St. Louis. St. Louis continues to be the soccer capital of, of this great sport in America and uh, to have a team once again the All St. Louisans uh, is a, another exciting trip. What brings you to town, Kyle? Well, we're here tonight. Christian Family Night is uh, much like what the uh, St. Louis Cardinals have done from a baseball standpoint. Uh, they've used that as an annual event to not only sell some more tickets, but also to introduce some more folks to the game of, of baseball. And the same thing's happening now in indoor soccer. And so a little bit after the game, I'll have a chance to talk about not only my soccer career, but a little bit of what God's done in my own life. Now, Mike, when these indoor games were first televised in the United States, there was a game of the week on the USA Network. Al Troutwick 
and the gentleman to my left, Kyle Rowe Jr., did the games. And how long did this act play, Kyle? Bill. <laughs> yeah, but I think that was before Mike was born. It was that <laughs> some time ago. We had just uh, started using color television. Uh, but we had, a, we had a lot of fun and uh, had some tremendous sellout crowds. Pe people here in town, of course, remember what I refer to as the Checker Dome, though I guess it's still called the arena, and some of the great battles between St. Louis and New York that really got uh, the game of indoor soccer jump-started to where now we've got mature fans and people appreciate the game. And uh, I'm just thrilled that St. Louis continues to participate in this game. Yeah, St. Louis and the New York Arrows you're talking about, Cal, they continue to be real prime movers, at least at the time they were. The groundwork has been laid. And, of course, the first half statistics, ambush trailing as far as the score is concerned. However, out shooting Baltimore in that first half. Now you talked about the St. Louis Steamers, the days of old, the New York Arrows, those particular games, the Wichita Wings. In what areas uh, has this game grown to be accepted by people in the United States? Well, of course, a number of things we're just watching here, the goalkeeper play, uh, what Slobo Ilyevsky started, uh, now just about every goalkeeper continues. And uh, even Jamie, who's not necessarily the most skillful with his feet, Goalkeeper comes out and he, and, he, and he plays the ball with his feet a lot more than in the early in the early days. Joe Reiniger, 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 shoots his goal! Yes! Joe Reiniger, another slamming goal for St. Louis, and with 13, 28 to go in the third, just like that, a 6-6 standoff. Not for Abraham Hawaka, the ambush owner, excited about it. And the ambush have tied it up. Number 21, Joe Reininger, continues to be involved in the offense. This ball rebounds off of Mark Moser, and running onto it very and alertly is point number point 21, point Joe Reininger. From that distance, with the ball at his feet, he will not hesitate Joe to go forward. Reininger. That's exactly what occurs here. He eludes that last tackler. Number 21, Reininger, buries it in the opposite Mark side Moser. netting. The level of this game at six apiece with the Baltimore Spirit. 46th of the year, and the ambush have tied it up. They've scored the last three goals, and as a result, a six-stick standoff. And St. Louis will work out again. And a little bit different, Kyle, than the outdoor game, the way these goals pile up in a hurry. Well, I think that's one reason you don't have to be a huge soccer fan and understand the subtleties of the tactics of the outdoor game to appreciate the game of indoor soccer. And I, I'm just excited to see indoor soccer continue to play a, a major role in the development of the players. I mean, the amount of time that a player has to make a decision is very short in indoor soccer. You've got to have almost immediate control. Oh, 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 oh. Those abilities translate to the outside game as well. Well, we want to mention that Ted Drew's Frozen Custard is the proud sponsor of the Ambush Ball Toss program. And for each Ambush goal, the player who scores it tosses a commemorative soft soccer ball to a lucky Ambush fan. The Ambush Ball Toss program is compliments of Ted Drew's Frozen Custard Visit Ted Drew's Chippewa location for great frozen custard year-round. Cal, uh, obviously the World Cup coming to the United States was wildly successful, spectator-wise, television rating-wise. Does the World Cup having come to the United States, does that have an overall umbrella effect to the sport, any type of the sport being played? And a scoring play for Stankovic. Great setup in front, and with 12.09 to go in the third, Spirit of Baltimore have taken the lead once more. Well, Cal wrote was kidding about his age, but number five, <laughs> Mike Stankovic, was playing when you announced. Uh, he was and playing. he continues yep. to stay involved in the offense. Lays it off to Franklin McIntosh. McIntosh returns a play. Stankovic runs onto it, puts his team on top. He goes right at the last three defenders, finds the open person in the process. McIntosh, a little side foot pass to Stankovic, and he buries it and puts his team back on top, eight to six. He continues to play, Kyle. Mike Stankovic, one of those great attacking defenders who judges the precise time to go forward. He's only gone forward two or three times tonight, but uh, picks his shots well and still has a tremendous skill to be able to, yeah, to he beat three we, players with a single pass. We talked about that. He doesn't do nearly as much running as he used to, but it's all productive when he does so. And, of course, very important for the ambush, Bill and Kyle, for the ambush to clinch first place. Well, I'm not sure exactly who uh, Darrell wants to play in the first round, but of course, home field advantage is always something that you try to maintain. And then, of course, 
any type of momentum you want to take into the playoffs. You just don't want to have a, a poor performance as a, as a team. Yeah, he's looking for two wins in his 39th and 40th game, so they'd have a four-game winning streak going into those playoffs. Now, that's the ideal situation. Here's another scoring play. Brad Smith behind Jamie Swanner on a shot low to his right, and the Spirit have scored two in a row. It's now 10-6 Baltimore. Well, Brad Smith goes forward, and in the process, everybody backs up. He has the ball at his feet. He does one step over, two step overs, three, pushes it to his right. And because all the defenders backed up in front of the goalkeeper, that was the reason for that goal being scored. Smith coming forward again, as I pointed out, stepped over it once, then twice, puts it past the diving Jamie Swanner. And Baltimore goes on top, 10 to 6. And the scoring play, Brad Smith unassisted at 341, 10 6 in favor of the Spirit. Kyle, we were talking about the World Cup, and you were starting to talk about the effect on soccer, of course, outdoor and indoor. I think for all of us who have been in soccer, anything that happened was not a major surprise. We knew it would be successful. We, uh, I was thrilled that we had record-setting attendance. But I think for most American sports fans who may not be familiar with soccer, they were surprised there was not any violence. But with the triple level of security that occurred at every stadium, with every ticket holder having to have a seat, is once again, Baltimore on the attack. And the Spirit make a play, but Steve Trichu sliding on the tackle to break it up and cleared right back in the midfield with 10.35 to go in the third, 10-6 in favor of Baltimore. And Steve Trichu leaves it for Daryl Duran. Bill McDermott, any remembrances of Kyle Rope when he was playing? Indeed, I have. From, from, your, from your crib? <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We are of the same decade, Mr. Rope. Uh, Kyle is uh, dramatically remiss in not talking about his soccer career. Uh, first and foremostly, he was the first American to win a scoring title of any description in the then NASL when Kyle played for the Dallas Tornado in the North American Soccer League. He was also Rookie of the Year. We talked about the St. Louis Steamers and the New York Arrows having some great games. Whenever the Dallas Tornado came to town to get, play against the St. Louis Stars, those were always some great matchups, Kyle. Well, Al Trost and Pat McBride and uh, Casey Frankowitz and all the guys of that era, uh, really just tremendous missionaries for the game of soccer. And I'm so pleased that many of them have stayed in the area and continue to invest their lives in the game of soccer with young people. Yeah, and Kyle also is not talking about the fact, Mike, that he also gave soccer a huge, an immense shot in the arm when he won the ABC Superstars competition, thereby giving some real identity to the fact that soccer players, yes, indeed, are athletes. Well, to be able to go against an uh, O.J. Simpson and Lynn Swan and uh, Julia Servi and represent the game of soccer, that was one of the great thrills for me to prove, as you said, that soccer players are great athletes, too. And the Spirit take over 10-6. We're glad to have Kyle Roach Jr. alongside. Here's a play for the Spirit. Barry Stitz now as Baltimore have scored two in a row and have taken a 10-6 advantage after the ambush had scored three straight to tie it up, and that's the way this game goes. Now, I was talking to Dave McWilliams, the Baltimore coach, prior to tonight's game. And he says this new Baltimore Spirit squad has oh, been accepted by the people in the Baltimore community. And Baltimore, of course, was so led by Kenny Cooper for a long period of time, and it's nice to know that, that the fans have identified this team. I want to mention the ambush will be at Union Station from 4.30 to 6.30 Saturday, April 1st, for the kickoff rally for the playoffs. We hope to see you at Union Station prior to the opening game Saturday, April 1st, and a long shot going up into the stands. 10 6 Baltimore. Thank you very much, Cairo Jr. We appreciate it, and best of luck to you, and thanks for joining Enjoy us. Enjoy being with you, and take care of our young Bill here. All right. <laughs> 10, you, 6, 10 6 Baltimore. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Chris Kidding with the shot. We are back to action here at Kiel. 10-6 in favor of the Spirit. Ambush trying to make a play for Hundelt. In for Eric Eichmann, wrapping it for Chris Kenny. A long pass into the corner for Maurer, but it skips right towards Malia, and he just leaves it out for his own defense and then just hurls it right back into the St. Louis end. Two players colliding in front of Jamie Swanner and Cody McDaniel, and St. Louis will restart in their own backfield. Baltimore club uh, is pretty surprising to me, Mike. They have a very nice mixture of good defenders, strong midfielders, people up the top who can keep the ball, and consequently they're on top by a score of 10-6. 
Ambush looking for a victory here. They work it in front. Eichmann shoots it, dribbles towards the net, and Malia falls to his knees. The Spirit losing at home to St. Louis last weekend. Some revenge on their mind here tonight. They have the lead by four. And here is Stankovic. Leaves it free into the corner. It ricochets towards the goal and up over Jamie Swanner. He looks up behind him and, of course, uh, break for the Ambush. Ambush soccer camp. June, July, and August. June 12th, actually, through August 18th. 18 local sites. For more information, call 241 Goal. Ambush players, including Daryl Duran and Jamie Swanner, will be instructors. And this is one of the main areas that the Ambush has been more successful in the last two years. They continue a visible identity in the community in the offseason. Vitally important. They expect over 2,000 youngsters from ages 5 to 17 to participate. And you can call the ambush, as mentioned, at 241 Goal for information. A very successful program. Daryl Duran leaves it for Jamie Swanner, who pounds it right back into the corner. And St. Louis take over. Eichmann now drops it for Duran. In for Eichmann, closing free. In on goal. A pass in front, Moser Eichmann. He scores! Great plays into the Baltimore end. Finished by Eichmann. And the ambush to within two. It's 10-8 Baltimore. Some more great work by number 10, the man in the ball right now, Eric Eichmann. Look at this composure in a tight space. And again, number 15, Moser gets involved in it. I think that ball went off a defender, Mike. That's certainly what it looks like. We'll get a better view of it here. Eichmann goes far with a little shuffle. Moser lays it off. It goes off the foot of number 37, Kevin Sloan and Eric Eichmann combining very nicely with Mark Moser. So Moser gets the goal unassisted, his 87th of the year in a 10-8 Baltimore lead. And now Swanner will take over for St. Louis. So the ambush to within two and a lead pass for Moser. What made that particular play, Mike, was the fact that Eric Eichmann went right at three defenders keeping the ball in the process to find the open Mark Moser. Here's a chance now towards the net. Swanner plays it himself and then elects just to hold on and just says thank you very much to Daryl Duran and just gives it to him right in front. And that's the play. If you like, the keeper to look long first. If it's not on, simply roll it to a defender. He keeps it in the process, then you go forward. And Duran knocked down. Play continues and the spirit take over. On the right side, defender Lance Jensen. And this close game here at Keel. Uh, and to end action, chance now for Jamie Christie. But Daryl Duran stays with him, sweeps it away, and here comes Hundel on a three-man break. Leads it free for Moser. Across for Reiniger in front of the goal. Back for Moser, heads it. Oh, he just missed. It may have grazed off the crossbar, the header for Moser. Looking for the hat trick, and he just missed. He'll do anything to score a goal, won't this, he? First of all, does he come off the floor? <laughs> this Mark Moser continues to be involved in every offensive aspect of He's the game. He's right. tackle by Kevin Hundelt. Kevin Hundelt much more active in this game than in our last two telecasts. He's up and back. He's involved in everything as well. Here's Maurer now closing in, shooting one off the backboards right to Malia, and he kind of sweeps it with a sidearm toss up the left side. However, intercepted. Spirit recover at the yellow line. Perry now, a shot right on, and Swanner sees it, catches it, and then will leave it for his own defense. 10-8 Spirit, under five minutes to go in the quarter. Very, very sure hand displayed, as always, by Jamie Swanner. That's such a key element, Mike, you keep the ball in the process. Here's Steve Trichu, a loss in front, blocked away. Here's Kunz's shot, that also deflected into the corner. Eichmann now for St. Louis, hounded by Namazi, drops it for Duran. Now Eichmann shooting, he missed going for the far side, and then Baltimore's Perry trying to maneuver free. Ambush with some momentum now. However, Eichmann knocked down. Foul against the Spirit. Eichmann again staying involved, distributing the ball, going to get the ball from his teammates, playing it to people who are open, drawing defenders. He's an excellent, excellent addition to this squad in the late season. Eric Eichmann, 18 points in his short stint with St. Louis. Here's Power on the bicycle. Try and a save made actually shot it from behind. He was turned the other way, 
and Molly got a pitch. It's third by Trichu up high with 4.06 to go. And Steve Trichu has seen the world over 40 countries. He has played professional soccer. Ambush soccer fans, Casey's Real Rock Cafe at St. Louis Union Station before and after the game for a free happy hour buffet. And the play knocked right back into midfield. We talked about Steve Trichu playing literally all over the world. And believe it or not, it was because of the game that the United States played their first game in 1990 in the World Cup when they get absolutely destroyed by Czechoslovakia, five to nothing. Nonetheless, Steve caught the eye of some players around the world, and consequently, he played overseas for a couple years. He's stationed right in front of that box for St. Louis on defense, and a break for Chris Kenny, left side for Steve Coons. However, it's clear towards the goal, and Malia able to make the stop and fires it up the left side. Mike's, John Perry breaks out of there. Mike Stankovic still has that burst when he needs it, Mike. Are you sure he's over 38? Positively. <laughs> Here's Kenny now for St. Louis. Moving free. Last now towards the top of the arc. Moving free. Stops into the corner for Eichmann. So he's the Gordy Howe of this league, huh? It's Kenny a shot. That's blocked away. He played till he was over 50. I'm not intimating that he's quite that old. He hasn't hit the half <laughs> century mark yet, Mike. Oh, and Daryl Duran plays it at midfield with under three minutes to go. In the quarter, 10-8 ball tomorrow. And the ambush content to keep the ball. Now we have a delayed penalty situation. Now they have the extra man on the field. It is Duran. Plays a pass across. Now for Maurer. Chips it for Zurich. Into the corner. Finally taken by the Spirit. And as soon as they touch it, the blue card and a foul going to be called a penalty against Baltimore. And you see that blue card Bill, that signifies the shootout as well as the power play. As they call it in the rule book, a penal offense, two-minute offense, and the player goes to the penalty box. You get a shootout attempt, uh, for which, if you're successful, you're awarded one point, and then on the following play after that, you still continue to keep the ball, you're awarded then another one-point situation. Omen Namazi having some words with the officials. Just over two minutes to go in the quarter. Let's see who will serve that penalty. St. Louis will take, however, the shootout opportunity, and with the goal on the shootout, and a power play goal can tie this game. With 2.33 remaining in this third quarter, but Mark Moser and Eric Eichmann working together very, very effectively. It's a charging call. Time of the penalty, 12.27, and Eric Eichmann will go for St. Louis, can cut the score to one. Eichmann will go against. Joe Malia works in on net, stops, shoots. He just missed, he shoots again, and Malia the save. You have five seconds to nail it home. That's why he was able to get off the second shot. But on that second shot, Malia got an arm on it. Yeah, Joe Malia comes out. Eric Eichmann, with that little, he has that favorite little move where he hesitates. Watch Joe Malia come out with a <laughs> wide, the wide wingspan, comes out. Eichmann's shot just goes past. On the replay, on the rebound, I should say, Malia makes a very effective save. Here it is again. Rebounds off that near post. Here he gets the rebound, but Malia very alertly turning it away. And Stankovic takes over along the boards on the opposite side, and Barry Stitz sails it right back towards the goal. Reiniger in against Lance Johnson, a foul on the play, and St. Louis will break out. Daryl Duran up towards the midfield area on that penalty against Michael Brady on the near side. It is controlled by Joe Reiniger. Ambush power play, Baltimore, penalty killing, so-so in this league. Here's Reiniger maneuvering free. Reiniger plays a pass across. Baltimore, 10th in the league in penalty killing, so a break for St. Louis. Here is St. Louis Duran, chips it for Reiniger to the near side for Duran. And St. Louis, Mike leads the league in the power play category. They've been successful 58% of the time. Here is a chance now on the opposite side, but control by Stitz, and he just sails it right back into the St. Louis end. Under a minute to go on the penalty against Brady, charging the call at 12.27. And the St. Louis ambush break on the right side. And it is Daryl Durant. On the near wing for Reiniger. Stops, shoots one, blocked away. Owen Moser on the half volley attempt. Clears it up into the stands. Good scoring chance again for Moser, who looks for the hat trick. 
Mark Moser attempts that leaping side volley. Just goes high over the crossbar. Reiniger starts that particular play, tries to slide it across the face of the goal to Eichmann. It rebounds off Stankovic, and there's Moser trying that leaping side volley. And the goalkeeper, Joe Malia, will just hurl it right back into the St. Louis end. However, hanging it away was Hundel. The ambush still up 25 seconds to work on the power play. Reiniger, advance Moser, stops at the arc to make a play, then gently tips it for Hundel. 49 seconds to go in the quarter. Hundel leads Duran, closing in. Side of the goal, Eichmann centers, knocked away. Clear. Hundel after it, but a two-on-one break now for the uh, Spirit. McIntosh moving in, plays it for Sloan. In on goal, a shot. Reiniger gets a leg on that. Ambush failed to score in the power play, but strength. able to break out or break up that two-man two-on-one chance into the ambush end. Good work by Joe Reininger to get back on defense. He saw the danger developing, and he immediately got back to help out. Here's Duran centers. Moser can't get a lot of mustard on that shot, and it caroms away. And another three-man break for Baltimore Sloan. Now, lead pass in front. Brady out of the box. Can't make a play. Swatter plays it on the right side, and that's it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end of the third quarter. The ambush. Within two, it's 10-8 Baltimore and an exciting game from the Keel Center. We'll have the exciting fourth in just a moment. This is Ambush Soccer on Prime. St. Louis Ambush trail the Baltimore Spirit 10-8, and Bill McDermott, a penalty shootout opportunity in the second, in the third quarter. What kind of options does the goalkeeper have? Well, in this particular play, Joe Malia comes out to cut off the angle of Eric Eichmann. Eric goes right at Malia in the process, and right about in this area, he will hesitate. Let's watch the play develop as Eric Eichmann goes forward. Now watch Eric with this little hesitation to somewhat throw off the goalkeeper. It works, he goes down. Eric tries to curl it at that near post. It doesn't curl enough. Rebounds directly past the goalkeeper to Eichmann, who strikes the rebound first time, but Malia alertly turns it inside. Very good goalkeeping from that man, Joe Malia, who shares the goalkeeping duties for the Baltimore Spirit with Chris Vaccaro. Bill, you have five seconds to score on those shootouts, and Eichmann took advantage as far as the time is concerned, but Malia made the saves. Uh, with that being said, despite the fact that Eric Eichmann missed the shootout, I'd have him taking him all night long. St. Louis ambush and the Spirit. St. Louis with a great crowd, the entire lower deck. Sold out tonight, and St. Louis fans looking for a fourth quarter comeback for the ambush to capture the division title. Their second straight. Here's Eichmann a shot. Malia makes the save, and then we'll set it up for his own defense. And the excitement will continue in the postseason play. As Eichmann now works in against the defense. Eichmann closing in. Stop, plays a pass across for Kuntz. And now back in the midfield. 14 and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Lead pass ahead in for St. Louis. And Maurer now in against the defense. Big Steve Maurer leaves it free for Duran. Shoots his goal! Ambers have tied it up. Duran let it go. It may have gone off the can at the Baltimore defender. Nevertheless, it's a 10 all time. Once again, the ambush scores because the defender comes out of the backfield and wreaks havoc in the offensive third. Watch it develop again. Steve Maurer holding it, keeping it, waiting for the runner. He appears in number seven, Daryl Duran, across the face of the goal. It rebounds off the defender. Number seven, John Perry. Good running off the ball by number seven, Daryl Duran. Steve Maurer does his job by keeping it, waiting for the runner across the face of the goal. Art by accident, but nonetheless, they all count. Can't get a better scoring play for Perry. Duran gets credit for the goal. Perry looks up, and Daryl Duran says, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, Daryl Duran did his job by running off the ball, and Steve Maurer 
playing sparingly this evening because of a back injury. Did a great job of keeping the ball in the process, Mike. There's somebody always running off the ball. That play's always on. Here's Big Zurich for St. Louis to LaPosha. A shot blocked away. Ambush have outscored Baltimore 10-4 since trailing 6-0 in the first quarter. And a chance. McIntosh off the arm of Swanner. It caroms up behind him and up into the stand. Playoff tickets available, of course. Coming up, you can pick up a $2 coupon at all venture locations throughout the St. Louis metro area. And of course, you can go to any Tickets Now outlet, Heel Center box office, you can call Dial Ticks at 291-7600. The first game, Saturday, April 1st at 735 at Keel. And if necessary, game two, April 2nd, also at Keel at 735. Here's a chance now for McIntosh, a shot that over top and cleared by St. Louis up on the right side. 13 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And here is McIntosh now for Baltimore in against the defense. Stops, waits for his team to organize. Duran after it and finally he has to go back towards midfield. Be careful now the ball possession by Baltimore. That's how they were successful in that second quarter. And there is Stankovic along the far side. 11 years in the MISL. And it's cleared ahead along the far side. Trichu misfires for the moment, then Swanner pounds it off a oh, defender well, and actually off an ambush player. It up high with the score 12.55 left in the quarter. 10-10, and we should have an exciting final 12.55. We'll be right back. Here at the Keel Center, a 10-10 standoff. Ambush have scored 10 out of the last 14 points to tie up this game. Here is John Klein down the right side. In shoots Malia. The save. It ricochets into the corner. Moser keeps it in. Deep for St. Louis. Chance for Klein. In Trichu a shot. That's off the defender. And that being Jamie Christie up into the stands. And the ambush will start it. In deep into the Baltimore Spirit territory. We've seen number 11, Steve Trichu, get much more involved in the flow of the attack in the latter stages of this current season. Ambush will start it up. Reiniger with Hundelt on his right and Daryl Duran. Reiniger to Duran, closing in. Shoots! Malia gets a hand on that and it deflects up high into the stands. Great setup for Daryl Duran. Soccer Master, the World Cup of Soccer Shops, is your headquarters for the number one name in soccer, Adidas. The official supplier of the MPSL is available at all your local Soccer Master locations. To see the full line, call 1-800-926-9287. They score! Joe Edinger on the setup in front. And with 12 and a half minutes to go in the quarter, Ambush set it up for Reidegger. And a 12-10 Ambush advantage. Mike Merrick, it's imperative in this league to be successful on your dead ball opportunities. The ambush are doing so this evening. The quick early ball to Reiniger. He runs onto it, goes through the legs of another defender. The spirit defenders really have a nightmare here with these close call situations. Reiniger runs onto it. The quick early ball furnished to him by Daryl Duran. And Joe Reiniger records his 47th to put his club on top by a score of 12 to 10 now. Daryl Duran, two assists. Reiniger's second goal, 47th of the year. Ambush outscoring Baltimore, 12-4. After trailing six zip. We have so many options on those dead ball situations. Here's a chance to score, right back. A scoring play for Barry Stitz. How about that, a 12-all tie. Baltimore coming right back to tie it up. Number 21, Barry Stitz. Equalize as far the Baltimore spirit as these clubs continue to trade goals. Number eight, Lance Johnson starts it, takes a shot. The ball simply redirected by Stitz, rebounds off a of Kunst. Stitz gets his own rebound, and they score. Lance Johnson coming up from behind. Barry Stitz initially involved in a play. It broke loose momentarily to Steve Kunst, but the rebound was secured by Stitz, who equalizes now for his club. The defender, Johnson, it appeared 
the assist on that goal. Stitz is 32nd at 243 and a 12 all standoff. Ambush back the other way. A Baltimore defender, defender upended and cleared up towards midfield. A lot of action here in this game. And Brad Smith, the pass broken up. Hundell plays in midfield. And the ambush, who have made a terrific comeback in this game, have to score again in order to take the lead. And Duran pounds it free into the corner. Koontz after it, it bounces awry. Eichmann trying to chip it free and drops it back for Hundell. Kevin Hundell for the ambush. Out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Able to play it free into the corner. St. Louis Koontz now. Knocked down. Gets back up. Drops it back for Duran. Chips it into the corner for Eichmann. In against the defense. Eichmann. Trying to center one. Oh, and Malia out to play it for Baltimore. The show Malia having a great game tonight for Baltimore. Some very alert goalkeeping. And a play right back into the ambush end. Here comes St. Louis. Hundell, a chip pass in. Goes around the ground. Hit on goal. Shoots, he just missed. Rebound Eichmann, a chance. That deflects high into the stands. Great scoring chance for Moser, bidding for the hat trick. Mark Moser runs in at the near post. He was trying to curl it around the keeper. He didn't quite get the curl he wanted. And earlier, a Great chance for Moser. There's that play developing again. We just spoke about it. Mark Moser going right at the goalkeeper. He tried to curl it there. Didn't quite curl enough. Had he done so, would have been Here's a goal. Reiniger has shot on the dead ball and a break for Baltimore. Under 11 minutes to go in the corner. McIntosh in, shoots, scores! How about that? The Spirit have scored two in a row and have now taken the lead at 14-12. Well, if there's one guy you don't want going one-on-one -on -one with your last defender, it's that man right there, number 10, Franklin McIntosh, because he's very skilled and looks forward to solo opportunities. Here's how the play developed. All the way out of the backfield, Jamie Christie sends it long. Now, here is Franklin McIntosh, one-on-one -on -one with that last defender. It's Daryl Duran, beats him, and in the process, beats the keeper, Jamie Swanner. They go on top, 14 to 12. Franklin McIntosh receives it, cuts it towards the inside, Slots it to the legs of Jamie Swanner. Very nicely and effectively done by Franklin McIntosh. Franklin McIntosh, the all-time scorer in NPSL history, and he passed Dan O'Keefe, the former St. Louis player. Well, Franklin McIntosh will cheat occasionally, won't come back to help on a defense. He stays up high and waits for situations exactly like this. Baltimore is aware of that. Here's Michael Brady now closing in. With the ambush now down by two, and Swanner will leave it for his own defense. So a terrific comeback by the ambush, momentarily spoiled by Baltimore. And you can see that Daryl Duran fighting off, or attempting to fight off Franklin McIntosh, still does not have that mobility because of that knee injury. 9.59 to go, fourth quarter. Daryl Duran's team coming into the action at 28 and 10, their best record as the ambush they were 25 and 15 last year and the coach and player for st louis looking for his team to capture the division title in this last 10 minutes of play they would have preferably like to do it in their 39th game each team plays 40 games we talked about this earlier mike that the kansas city attack played their 40th game what month month and a half ago Seems how long have long? they been off they're waiting to see if the ambush will win one of their final two games and finish in second. They are rooting for Baltimore tonight on a lead pass ahead for Maurer. Leads it right ahead. Shoots. Blocked away. Loose in front of the box. And Malia able to play it for Baltimore and then just sails it all the way down. Right back on net. And in fourth and final spot in the National Division, Mike, still not solidified between Detroit and Wichita. A whopping 33 saves for the 25-year-old goalkeeper, Malia, who's really taken the goalkeeping uh, position away from Chris Vaccaro, who's been a star in this league. Yeah, Dave McWilliams told me prior to the game, McWilliams is the coach of the Baltimore Spirit, the favorite son of Baltimore, as a matter of fact, played many years for the Baltimore Blast that he's very, very comfortable with Joe Malia in goal. And you can see the reason why, if indeed they hold on to win this game, it is clearly because of his work in the goal. Ambush, however, take control in midfield. Klein trying to push it ahead for Reiniger. 
Klein knocked off the ball. Ambush lose possession, but will restart up in the midfield. John Klein saying, hey, listen, I'm going to start it. I was fouled, and he knew it, so they'll start it up for the ambush. Keep the ball in a process and a dead ball situation. And St. Louis chip it Duran in deep for big Greg Zurich. Acquired late from Dayton, trying to work it in front. Reiniger after it and cleared up the right side. And Baltimore clear it free. Hundled after it, knocked away right back towards Jamie Swanner with eight and a half minutes left in this game. The ambush trailed 6 0 at one point. They led 12 10, but now we're down 14 12 with eight and a half minutes to go in the quarter. John Perry shoots. He scores. Stankovic, I believe, let's see, it was headed in. And the Spirit have the lead, actually. It was Brad Smith who knocks it home. A 16-12 Baltimore lead. That ball took an odd bounce, and I mean by that a rare occasion where a ball gets in behind Jamie Swanner. Rebounds off of Jamie, and running onto it and heading it was number seven, John Perry, one of their leading goal scorers. We talked about that prior to the game. You always have to be careful of number seven, John Perry. Always gets into a real clear-cut goal situation. Excuse me, John Perry on the assist. <laughs> Brad Smith with the goal. And a 16-12 Baltimore lead. The Spirit with three quick tallies. Eichmann now in front, tries to play it for Koontz and knocked away. Boy, what a comeback by St. Louis, but the Spirit recovering on their own. Here's Koontz now trying to center one, loose to the right side. Eichmann now chips Hundelt, moving it on goal. Can't make a play and clear it away for McIntosh. Swatter needs it up towards Koontz. A total of 7.56 left in this game. 16-12, Baltimore. 7.49, Mike, that's an eternity. Especially with the goal scoring way to do things in the MPSL. Three, two, and one points for different types of goals. And the ambush will start it up. Long shot for Big Zurich. Shoots it off the backboards. Nobody home. After it also, Eichmann headed away by Baltimore. Kenny after it also, and finally a break now again with McIntosh. In on goal, Swanner beats him to it, gets a hand on it. McIntosh down, and a stop into the St. Louis end. Dangerous play, whistled up on number 10, Franco McIntosh for the high foot against Jamie Swanner. And a break for St. Louis again. McDaniel leads Duran, in, shoots, tipped away, blocked off. Duran shoots, oh, Molly on the save. Rebound in front, McDaniel, a chance. Rebound, loose in front, and Molly falls on top with three ambush players all over the Baltimore goalkeeper. All kinds of saves from Joe Malley this evening. He's playing superbly for the Baltimore Spirit. And there is Molly up. Just sails it all the way down. Headed by Trichu. A stop, a foul against the ambush this time. And Baltimore will start it up with 6.49 left in this game. The ambush now down by four. And the Spirit chip it for Chris Morgan. Into the corner it goes. Chance blocked away. And St. Louis just clear it out of harm's way. And all the way back as it deflects up along on the far side. 16-12 Baltimore will take a break from the Keel Center. Back here at Keel, the ambush giving up three consecutive Baltimore goals after scoring a myriad of tallies to take the lead. The Spirit now up by four, trying to spoil a division championship for St. Louis at home. In their 39th game, only one game left after this evening. Clinch that national division championship. And a clearing shot going up high with 6.24 to go in the fourth quarter. Ambush looking forward to postseason play beginning April 1st at the Keel Center. We look forward to that. Baltimore will take over and leave it for their own defense. And of course, April 1st, 7.35 against either Wichita or Detroit. 
even Milwaukee a possibility and then game two if needed at Peel 735 also if the teams are tied at one. Ambrose take over on the right side. Maurer leaves it there. St. Louis will start it up in the midfield. John Klein fouled going forward. Uh, Klein still continues to work in the later stages of this fourth quarter, seeking to make something develop by going at defenders and finding some people in the process. And here come the ambush. Daryl Duran slows it up. Under six minutes left in this game. Duran now chips it free into the corner. Klein. Klein now chips it right back for Hundo for St. Louis. Across for Moser. In against Perry. Into the corner it goes. It's centered, but blocked away at the last moment and cleared outside by the Spirit. That's the kind of situation that the ambush wants to keep doing with 531 remaining. Continuing to apply the pressure to Baltimore to see just exactly how good Joe Malia is going to be in the latter stages of this fourth quarter. So far, he's been more than equal to the task. He's really been playing well, Mike. And Daryl Duran will set up Pete for St. Louis. Drops it back, Reiniger, a one-timer wide. Rebound in front, this Baltimore could have had Joe Melia and Chris Vaccaro in goal. Nobody's stopping this blast from Kevin Hundell. Durant starts it again. Reiner gets the initial shot off. It rebounds off the boards to Hundell. It runs onto it, hammers it, gets every panel of the ball, and puts it behind Joe Melia. There he is looking at the play, watching it developing. The initial shot by Reininger, rebounds off the board. Here's his reaction, no chance to make that save. A blast by number nine, Kevin Hundell. His 27th of the year, Joe Reininger on the assist, 9.33 the time. And the ambush still in striking distance, shot by Stankovic off a leg. And Baltimore will start it up with 5.20 left in this game. Daryl Duran again starts to play with that quick free kick as we look at number nine. Kevin Hundell, who, as I pointed out earlier in this game, Mike, has really been much more involved in the offense. That's what you need from Kevin Hundell. Here's a chance in front. They score. Great setup for the Spirit and a blast home. It is now 18-14 Baltimore. Well, you don't need that when you're trying to get back into this game. The key to it, one more time on the dead ball situation, the free kick, the quickness with which the free kick was taken. Now, Jamie Swanner was somewhat before the play, complaining that it was interfered with. Let's see if that develops. Uh, Brad Smith right alongside. That's what Jamie's claiming. His view and play was obstructed by Brad Smith. The quick free kick from Mike Stankovic and the blast puts Baltimore on top by a score of 18 to 14. Well, they give Stankovic the goal. I thought it was actually Sloan that made him let it go, but the scoring play Actually, Mike Franklin McIntosh gets credit for the tally. Stankovic on the assist. 9.42 the time, and St. Louis down by four again. The quick free kick, Mike, was why that play was successful. Here the ambush working in front of the score! Oh! On his setup in front, and just like that, the ambush back to within two. It is 18-16 Baltimore. Joe Reiniger with the scoring play. That's a fabulous play by number 21, Joe Reiniger. Mark Moser again involved in it. Fights off two defenders, does Moser. Cross the face of the goal. Inside of that foot between his legs, number 21 Reininger. This is beautifully executed by Moser, who does all the dirty work. Well, you couldn't quite see it from that angle, but that was beautifully done by Joe Reininger. Gets his third this evening and continues to rise in the top 20 in the overall league statistics for goal scorers. Here's Eichmann in from our heading. Try tipped away and blocked towards the arc. Eichmann is shot. That's also blocked in Baltimore. Break back in the midfield. Reiniger's 48th of the year. The hat trick and a break now up the left side. And Baltimore chipping free in the midfield, but stolen by Chris Kenny. On just over four minutes left in this game. Here's a chance. Long shot going up high. And it looks like Steve Maurer, who's been hurting with that back injury, down and out in towards the Baltimore goal. 
4-12 left in the fourth quarter. The Baltimore Spirit in a wild fourth quarter have the lead 18-16. It started as a 10-8 game at the beginning of the fourth, and now it's 18-16 Baltimore. Teams have really traded goals, if you will, Mike, in this fourth quarter. A lot of offense from both clubs. Eight goals oh, in the fourth. Lose. And the ambush down by two. Every time they get into a hold, they've been able to come back in this game. We'll see if they can do it once more. Here's the dangerous McIntosh. In against Daryl Duran. McIntosh against three ambush defenders just plays it right back into midfield. And Baltimore comes into this game having lost three in a row as opposed to the ambush who won their last two. Trying to close out the season, having won the last four. Here's a break for St. Louis. Moser into the Baltimore end of the field. Stops to make a play. Chips it back for Duran with three and a half minutes left. Ambush desperately trying to tie the game and control on the opposite wing. Here's a chip pass for Daryl Duran from McDonald into the corner. Moser in against the defense. Stops as a player. Trichu cutting in front. Moser in. Moser. Shoot. Locked away. Headed by McDonald in front. Trichu just knocked with an elbow by Malia up the left side. And a two man spirit break into the St. Louis end. Sloan shoots. That's wide. Rebound headed by Trichu. And here come the ambush. On a three man break. Trichu on the give and go. Back for Daryl Duran. Moving it on goal. Duran stops. In against the defense. Shoots in front. Eichmann. He scores! The St. Louis ambush have tied it up. 18 apiece. And listen to this crowd. George as number seven, Daryl Duran comes out of the backfield, goes at the last defender, beats him in a process, rebounds it off the near post boards, running onto it. Number 10, Eric Eichmann. That makes it 18 apiece. Another look at it as Duran comes forward, beats the last defender, and rebounds it off the near post boards. He loses to O'Malia. Eric Eichmann seven. continues to beat Echo, and it's now 18 each. They give Duran the goal, unassisted at 12-13. And we're in an 18 all time. Eric Eichmann did not touch the ball, but he wreaked the havoc that made the play develop, causing the defenders to be uncertain in their clearance of the ball. Here's Reiniger setting it up. Long shot. He sails it up high. What a game, Bill McDermott. Over 11,000 fans, almost 12,000, 11,936. The ambush cheerleaders trying to get things going and they are loving it here at Keel. Another great crowd here, Mike. Uh, two weekends ago against Buffalo, there's 14,000. The following evening, back-to-back -back games against Kansas City, there's 12,000. The fans in St. Louis have really taken to this team. Here's a play. Stankovic breaks it up. A player knocked oh, down. A foul on the play in St. Louis will restart, trying to take the lead. If they score here in the waning moment, they can capture their second straight NPSL division title. Here's Hundel, shoots, Hundel that's off the side. backboards and wide, and it ricochets towards midfield. Rakel on the opposite oh, side. Here's Maurer, who's back Steve after Maurer. that short time on the bench, working in against the defense, being held, chips it free into the corner for Klein. Klein knocked down and cleared, right back into midfield and hustling back Trichu for the ambush. The ambush keeping the ball, forcing the spirit just to clear it anywhere. Here's Maurer now in for Klein. In on goal, trying to make a play. Maurer after it also, mad scramble, and finally it's whistled down. John Klein and Steve Maurer trying to make something happen, going at those last two defenders. Joe Malia comes up with the ball again. Under two minutes left earlier, Klein was able to race towards the net, and it was blocked at the last moment. I think you summed it up accurately, Mike. A mad scramble. <laughs> Here's a header towards midfield. Reiniger after it, foul back against the Spirit. Fans not sure what the call was. It's actually going against the Spirit, and St. Louis will start it up. A minute and a half left. 18 apiece and a great game here at the Keel Center. And St. Louis take over. 
Here is Kuntz in for Durant. In on goal. Shoots. Blocked by Stankovic. And a three-man break for Baltimore back the other way. Here comes the leading scorer, Sloan. In for McIntosh. Loose in front. Knocked by St. Louis in the midfield. Headed on the right side. Break for Moser. In on goal. And Kuntz. He shoots. Oh! Off the crossbar. Rebound. They score. This play die. Number 21, Reininger records his fourth of the evening. There he is, hair a little disheveled. Why shouldn't it be? He's been relentless throughout this entire game. Number 21, Joe Reininger. There's a dejected goalkeeper from the Baltimore Spirit, Joe Melia, who has up until now been playing superbly, but the ambush continue to come at the Baltimore Spirit. Moser starts it, look at this blast from Kuntz. Rebound just over the head of Trichu, running on through it, out of the backfield and scoring the goal is number 21, Joe Reininger, but Moser again starts the play. Kuntz off the shot, rebound just over the top of the crossbar, and watch Joe Reininger run on to it, hammers it with his left, beating the goalkeeper, Putting the ambush on top, 1 and 18. It's really all happening here. We're back to action. St. Louis ambush with 30 seconds left. Trying to capture the division title with 23 seconds left and a 20 to 18 lead. And the play on the left side. Here's a chance for Stankovic on the right wing boards. Sloan shoots and deflected by Hundelt. Up into the stands with 13 seconds left. And the ambush. The fans sense the ambush looking for that title. Daryl Duran excited. The ambush will still have to kill off the final 13. Here's Duran losing. Loose ball controlled by Perry. Shoots. Sweater gets it on line. Five seconds left. That's going to do it. Three, two, one. That's it. The game is over. The ambush have done it for the second straight year. They are national division champions. Over the top. Baltimore Spirit. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the They deserve this game because they came Final back score. from a six-point deficit at one time. They continue to work relentlessly, and therein lies the outcome. They beat Baltimore by 20 to 18. What a comeback by St. Louis, and they're all out on the field for this celebration. The final 20 to 18. We'll be back in just a moment. Final from St. Louis, 20 to 18. The St. Louis Ambush clinching the national division title. And we're going to go downfield with John Hewlett from KC with Steve Paxos and Abe Hawatma, the owner of the Ambush. To all these fans who came in support of the Ambush. We have a great soccer team. We love these players and we love our fans. Thank you very much for staying behind our team. Thank you very, very, very much. Abe Hawatma, ladies and gentlemen. And we have with us a special guest tonight, the commissioner of the NPSL, ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Steve Paxos, who is about to present the National Division Trophy to Ambush owner Abe Hawatma. Commissioner, would you like to say a few words? Good evening. On behalf of the NPSL, my pleasure to present this trophy to the 94-95 National Individual Champion, St. Louis Ambush, its president, Abe Hawatma, Daryl Duran, the coach, the players, and you, the fans. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, head coach, Daryl Duran.
How about the great job that Darrell has done as both the head coach of the ambush and the tremendous player he has been over the years, including this year. Darrell, of course, sustained an injury that cost him some playing time this year. But nonetheless, of course, he was important on the bench as he was on the field. Darrell, some comments tonight. First off, I'd like to congratulate the team. We all know soccer's a team effort. Everybody over there worked their butt off here tonight. Also, I'd like to thank the fans. I tell you what, this is only one step. We got a couple more steps to make, and I think it was evident tonight that we need you. We needed you in the fourth quarter, and you came through, and we dug down and dug it out. So we need you the rest of the season. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the ambush next game is here Sunday at 12.05 against the Wichita Wings. It's the final game of the regular season. And the first playoff game will be April 1st. Opponent not yet known. Now the ambush. Taking the victory lap. Ladies and gentlemen, the national. Well, uh, Daryl, I think, put it most succinctly that when they had to win the game, which was in the fourth quarter when the teams were trading goals, the ambush would not quit. They would not accept the fact that they were going to lose this game. Considering the fact, Mike, that it was a home game. They wanted no part of losing another home game. Remember, two weekends ago, they lost two home games in a row. Highly unlikely. And then they were coming off a three-game losing streak, their biggest all season. They wanted to win this game this evening to win this championship to prepare for the playoffs. And I think they did it convincingly in the fourth quarter. Joe Reiniger who scored his fourth, the game-winning goal. Excitement here at Keel. The ambush win the game. They are division champions, and the fans loving it. 20 to 18 the final here tonight from the Keel Center. I couldn't. I Party guys playing here. Look at it. Well, uh, ready to call 911 here. Great night for soccer in St. Louis. The Ambush clinched their second straight National Division title with a thrilling 2018 victory over the Baltimore Spirit. Great game tonight, Bill McDermott. Three stars tonight, two coming from the St. Louis Ambush as Daryl Duran greeted by Dr. Abraham Hawatma. And of course, two out of the three belonging to the Ambush. We'll start with the third star, Joe Melia, the goalkeeper for the Baltimore Spirit. How can a guy be a star in a losing effort? Well, he records 39 saves and kept Baltimore literally in this game far, far, far. He played superbly. Again, recording three goals this evening to go along with two assists. Number 15 for Mark Moser, the fourth leading scorer in this league. And the number one star this evening with the game-winning goal to his credit. He recorded three others. He had four total with one assist. He wears number 21, Joel Reininger, who continues to play superbly for the ambush. The three star selections are brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And Joe Reininger scores the game winner, the Ambush National Division Champions for the second consecutive year. St. Louis Ambush Soccer is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by your local Shell ETD convenience stores and by Southwestern Bell Mobile Systems. A cellular phone, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And by Health South Rehabilitation Center of St. Louis, the official sports medicine provider for the St. Louis Ambush. And by Boatman's, with money market accounts designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. St. Louis Ambush Soccer has been a presentation of Bud Sports and the St. Louis Ambush, aired through the facilities of Prime Sports Network.
St. Louis Ambush Soccer is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by your local Shell ETD convenience stores. And by Southwestern Bell Mobile Systems, a cellular phone, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And by HealthSouth Rehabilitation Center of St. Louis, the official sports medicine provider for the St. Louis Ambush. And by Boatman's, with money market accounts designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. St. Louis Ambush Soccer has been a presentation of Bud Sports and the St. Louis Ambush, aired through the facilities of Prime Sports Network.